I think it's incredibly damaging because um, Dr. Fryer has been in practice, I guess, since uh, the 80s. And it's been widely known when I was racing, um, people who were with him, it was dramatic, dramatic difference in performance. Um, but then there was huge drug scandal in 1998, which we had a chance to clean up the sport. And then everybody wanted to put it behind us. Um, every year there has been another scandal. And it's a few people, just a few people that are really um, uh, disrupting the system. And it's, it all has to do with financial gain. Um, and, and essentially basically, well, cheating. And Dr. Ferrari is well known to be uh, a master at uh, doping. <laughs> if Ferrari puts down the boosts in performance he can produce to nutrition and training techniques, but within cycling, many have reacted with skepticism to those claims. Uh, I would agree, and I, I don't believe there's enough scientific evidence out there that there's very little um, evidence of, of performance increase through nutrition. Um, you know, I, I, it's uh, even people that took antioxidants, um, a tremendous amount early 90s, it shows that the uh, cells actually had, it, were damaged by the um, artificial antioxidants. Your body produces a lot of stuff naturally that uh, uh, it's, it still gets to back to physiology 101. Uh, that's, a, that's really a, a, a kind of a, a, a cover for, for doping. Greg, have to ask this question. Were you ever tempted to dope during your career? I'd rather uh, not win a race than be positive. I mean, just it, it, it's it's winning a race where you're mass, you're cheating. It's kind of like taking a uh, a shortcut to the finish line. I mean, do you really win the race? And uh, so, I mean, I I I was very. Uh, I think the end of my career when I watched a rider of our, my team leave and he ended up dying just right after I left. Uh, it put a. Um, it wasn't even about. It wasn't about me getting cheated out of performance. It was watching uh, a human tragedy go on with all these riders. And, uh, and I was saying that the riders themselves, there's one constant here. The riders keep changing. Every five, 10 years, there's new riders. But one thing that hasn't changed is the same doctors are in there. People think, oh, well, you know, just let them take whatever they want. But these riders, they're, in a way, we're all like kids. Uh, we want parents to put the limits on us. We want to bounce up to those limits uh, like kids want to, but in the end, we, we all like that there's, there's somebody that's putting a brake on everybody. And, um, and I think that most riders never intend to get into onto the, in bike racing or any sport with the intention of doping. And, uh, and that's where I think it, it needs to come from the top. The change has to come from the top. Well, talking of the top, Greg, and I'm quoting here, the UCI say that today's riders are subject to the most innovative and effective anti-doping measures in sports, but you still see there being some big problems there. The problem is um, the credibility and the trust that's in there. Uh, when, when you have leaders of, of the governing body favoring um, and willing to accept uh, money from athletes that are uh, subject to a uh, suspicion of doping, um, it's inappropriate, and that's ethically crosses boundaries. And so that's the lack of trust, which also creates chaos within the peloton, within the riders. Now, an independent panel has been set up to investigate the role of the UCI during the Armstrong scandal. Do you have any confidence in that process? I would have more faith if they would cooperate with WADA and USADA and the government. Um, and hopefully they will they'll consider that because I think that this is a bigger uh, investigation than just uh, uh, looking through the books or like a, uh, an accounting uh, going in for an uh, uh, audit. It, it, it takes talking to people and it has to be done in a way that is neutral. I, I do believe that at least in the interim, um, the president of the UCI should uh, resign or at least temporarily resign while the investigation goes on. I think that would be a great step. And, and I, it would, I would give him credit for that because I think he should do that for the sport. In a funny way though, is this also an opportunity for cycling? Do you think there's a momentum for change now? Uh, yeah, absolutely, and it's it's not having to rip rip apart all of the UCI. It's it's bringing in a new leader, um, and really talking. To, I mean, working with the riders, working with the organizers, and looking at the best solution to to assure that there's a, a, a neutrality in drug testing. And it can't be done in house. It has to be out. It has to be independent. And if that happens, I think credibility can come back quickly to uh, cycling. Greg Armstrong is obviously still insisting he is innocent, but if he was to come out and tell a rather different story, would a confession be cleansing for the sport? 
Well, I think that's the greatest contribution uh, Lance could ever make to cycling. And uh, I, I, I am, uh, part of me wants to believe that that'll happen. Um, but usually it takes until you've lost everything, um, very similar to what happened to Floyd Landis. Um, but I think that uh, there's, there's always that chance. Uh, for whatever he's motivated by, it, it doesn't matter if he could um, come out and uh, show the system because he, got, he got away with 12 years of, of stuff that you know, nobody else really got away with. And it would be nice to know um, how you can use that information to prevent this ever from happening again.